Hey, welcome back to the Build Show Network. I'm Steve Basic, Architect. We're out at the Ranch Remodel today, and you are not gonna believe what's happening today. I've been waiting for today for literally months. So stay tuned. We got some exciting stuff going on. As I come up here, look what we have here today. Look what got delivered. Yeah, that's a section of our barrel vaulted coffered ceiling. And guess what? You get to watch the video because it's going in today. All right, so we have that panel here. The guys are getting it ready. I just wanted to run through the panel and talk about what they did at the shop. So you can see, obviously, they put it together. We're gonna go through the shop drawings again later. We have that nice kind of contemporary reveal in there. This is all vertical grain dug fir. It has a bendable plywood panel here. You can see on the top, we have a bunch of holes here that are registered to the next piece. So we have wooden dominoes that go in there that interlock the five pieces together to make up the whole ceiling. On the back side here, you can see we had a, that bendable fur panel. You can see how it has all the curves. So they literally built a curved template to spec and then they pressed and glued that bendable panel on the back of the frame there. And that's how they made this up. This is just a series of different glue ups where we have a, two pieces of five quarter and we finish it with a piece of one by material here. Makes for a nice contemporary frame has our nice radius there that we spec'd out, and uh, let's go and install. All right, so you can see we got one of the panels in place. The means to which we install these panels, we have a couple lifts here. You can see we have good protection, it's all fully padded here. And uh, we basically just crank this up. We have some metal straps up on the top side there that'll get screwed in up at the attic level to hold this in place. We have some stuff going around the perimeter that will also help hold this in place. And uh, let's not hold back, guys. Let's get this one up there. Yeah, so you can imagine, you know, when you're talking about finish work and it's spanning 15 feet and it's an arch that we don't have much tolerance to miss this by. It's gotta be damn near perfect. So, you know, getting this up, it takes a little bit of time. We gotta finesse it on our way up there to make sure that we're not binding on something. Let me see if I can't. It's, uh, it's these couple screws from the strap. Yep. So. I'd take it all the way up if we can. So there you go, you can see it's pretty much in place. You can see here, we might be able to get a better shot here, Matt, but you can see the series of uh, what we call dominoes here. You can see how those dominoes are basically sticking out and then we have the two holes here registered. So this literally is gonna get finished in place and then simply glued and pushed over and then secured in place. And that's how we get this coffered ceiling in place. All right, so you saw us lift that one in place. We talked about the construction. We had the video a couple months ago where I talked about it on the shop drawings when we were constructing these panels out of the shop. If you haven't seen that video, I suggest, hey, go take a quick peek at that video to get the full understanding of what we're doing here. But as you can see, we have the first three of five panels installed here. There's a total of five. They're about 39 inches long. The room spans about 15 feet in width. I don't know. I mean, I'd love to sit here and talk about it, but I say just take it in. I think it's a beautiful ceiling. We still have a little bit of molding. We got to run around the perimeter. We have a nice shadow molding that locks the bottom edge of that arch in place that mimics the shadow lines of the coffers themselves. Um, stay tuned in the future. I'm gonna go back to the studio. We're gonna talk about, again, we'll, we'll bring out that shop drawing. We'll talk about some of the specifics about this ceiling, but stay tuned to the Build Show Network. We're gonna have a, a really nice tour when this house is done, and we're gonna come in and see this in all its glory. So thanks for joining us today. Hey, everybody. 
Hope you enjoyed that out there. Man, those guys, traditional woodworks. Killing it with that arch ceiling. One of my uh, favorite components of all time getting installed in one of my projects. So very exciting, very exciting. So we're here. We're back at the studio. We're going to take a look at a couple things, of course. we got our trusty friend, Big Red, here. Um, but we're not going to look so much at the technical drawings today. We're going to talk about some uh, reasons on why we ended up with the panel number and count and matrix that we did. So let's dive into those drawings and uh, take a look to see how we got there. All right, everybody. So I grabbed, actually, this is a shop drawing that was done by uh, traditional woodworkers. And they do all their own shop drawings in-house. Basically, I give them the drawings with some um, intent dimensions, and then they take it and they create the drawings that they're going to use in their shop to cut it. Um, you can see again, you know, we're just this is a quick preview or review. Sorry, you know, that's each of the uh, profiles of the sections of that coffered ceiling. You can see here at the wall. It gets mimicked again, this here being the wall right there. And then we have a block here that that's attached to. And notice that we have these little reveals in here, right? That offers a little bit of intrigue. I will tell you that when we initialized this project, I thought there was a chance we might be building this on site. So I built it as this series of planks that would get built up which was still conducive to building it in the shop, but you'd have these, again, series of planks that get built up. We just happen to end up building this in the shop. But before we went out there and built it, we actually uh, got to do some drawings where, you know, what does this thing look like? And uh, had to have that conversation with the client so that we knew what to take to traditional woodworks and um, show them. So here's a uh, one of the panel systems. And I actually did a, a series of models because what we were trying to do was understand that we knew we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We knew we had eight panels in the arch. But the real question was, Along the length of the arch, how many panels were we going to divide that up into? And you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We did seven panels. And I don't know. I had the feeling when I looked at that 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 was a little busy. Um, so, um, and actually, that was seven. This one here is two, three, four, five, six, seven. This was the eight panel system. So again, if the seven was busy, I think the eight was busy. This, this eight panel around the arch, we kept that. I thought that was the right number, four to each side of the arch. And then the question of how many to break it to and lengthwise. But eight panels here, I don't think that was the right number either. Again, too busy, um, too much movement in the ceiling, too much to uh, for the mind to resolve. I wanted something far more relaxed. So we also looked at six panels, right? So we did a six panel model. And while the six panel was closer, it still was a little bit busy. Although had the client chosen the six, I could have been uh, talked into that one. But the reality is, is we end up building the five panel. I think the exaggerated rectangle was a little bit more conducive to the rectangular shape of the room. Um, and that a lot of times you were going to enter it from this side and see that long side of the, uh, the panel system stretching. So it would give that perception that the build, the, the room was much larger than it actually is because you had these longer panels that were you know, probably on the order of, uh, you know, if their X width was X, their length was probably on the order of 2X. And I just think that that worked out much nicer. I mean, you can see in the built uh, product there that we raised up, it looks pretty sweet. So, but 
<clears throat> you know, as an architect, these are kinds of the things that um, we're tasked with, that it's one thing to come up with the idea of, yeah, we'll do this barrel vaulted arch and we'll have these six segments or eight segments around the arch, but how do we break that up? What does the profile look like? What is the material that this is made out of? So getting the big idea is only half of the solution. Solving for all the pieces that are inside of that general solution, right down to the specifics of how are we going to build that, right? And then we bring back that shop drawing and we have all those answers, right? We know that it's going to be dug fur and it's going to be a bendable panel. We know that all of this is vertical grain fur and we understand what that profile is. And, you know, the thing to understand is none of this is by accident, right? And none of it is necessarily the first choice that we work through these systems to get and arrive at the solution that hopefully by weeding out a series of decisions, like should we have done eight panels, seven, six, or five? Um, I didn't, we never looked at four because I think five was about the right number um, when we actually did it. You can see here, again, that if this is X, then this ends up being 2X, which I think is a really nice proportion for those panels. So anyways... That's it for that arch ceiling. You saw it getting installed. It's uh, looking mighty fine down there. Kudos to uh, traditional woodworkers. You know, I you guys hear me say that all the time that you don't architects don't just come up with this idea and it becomes this glorious ceiling without the hard work of a whole lot of other team players. You know, we got Rick out there managing all of this, putting the whole system together. We got traditional woodworkers that had to solve for how do we make it and then how do we deliver it and then how do we install it. So they were tasked with three major parts of the success of this project. So, you know, as an architect or as a young architect, if you're watching this video, I can't stress enough that finding the right team players. And, and even if you're a homeowner, if you're a homeowner looking to have you know, some really nice things in, in your next custom house, understand they're not done by accident and you need pros out there that uh, understand what they're doing. Now, traditional woodworkers would confess this is probably the first barrel vault that they've ever done, but because they're experienced woodworkers, we went through the numbers and worked out the system to arrive at how we would have done this and got it installed. So anyways, hope you enjoyed that installation. Like I said, that ceiling's looking mighty fine. All righty. So another wrap on a video, but hopefully you enjoyed that one. Um, slightly uh, detoured from the uh, technical drawings that we usually do. Talk a little bit more about the architecting of uh, some components. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it again, that, that, that arch, you know, watch that video again, cause I think it's pretty awesome. But anyways, that's all we got for this week. Um, uh, go check out my previous videos. Um, got a lot of information out there. Likewise, uh, my colleagues, Matt, Jake, um, Brent and Wade all putting up fabulous information. Go check them out. Um, if you're not familiar with, uh, Instagram, I see. Get on there, go check out my handle, Steve Basic Architect. You find it on there. I post information regularly there to share. And lastly, every Thursday, me, Jake, and uh, Peter, we drop our new episode of the Unbuild It podcast. So join us there. We break down some complex uh, concepts of building science, try and make them a little easier to understand for all of us um, in the hope that uh, we're making the industry a little bit better. But anyways, that's all we got. Until next time, long live our buildings.